But it is now time to reveal the top 10 robots uh, of this competition. For these top 10 robots, we are going to be uh, spending a little bit more detailed time on this so that we, uh, we can take a look at their renders and see why they made them the top 10 robots. Uh, Gabe, why don't you start us off and tell us about the 10th ranked team, Team 21 from FTC 3658, the Bosons. All right, so on this team, we had Wesley, Andrew, and Ethan. And one of the things that the viewers will start to notice as we go farther down into the top 10 is that the robots are going to start becoming a lot more custom. So, for example, on this drivetrain, you can see that it's all custom um, and it's all pocketed and designed really cleanly. And overall, this robot just followed that design mentality. It's all super light, super clean. Um, one of the things that we did say about the robot, though, was maybe it was a little too simple. We would have liked to see some more um, advanced techniques um, for their shooter or something like that. But as far as everything on the robot goes, um, it looks like it's simple. It would all work really well. Uh, judges, anyone else have any comments besides Gabe you want to add in on here? I liked the it was it was a fusion kind of of both kit parts and a lot of custom uh, which I'm always a fan of but may not be weighted quite as high as all custom robots at least in this challenge. Um, man, I like the bigger wheels on the drivetrain. They may very well help get over that center bar, and it generally seems pretty easy to build stuff off of. All right, looking good. Moving on to our ninth place team, it is Team 47 from Team FTC. 3846 Maelstrom, and from a teammate from FRC 1369 Minotaur. So we had Isaac and Matt, Max, excuse me, from those teams, and man, this robot was really pretty. I loved how short it was and compact when it could be, or when it needed to be, and how much it could fold out and do more things when that was more efficient. Um, the color scheme is really nice. I did like the drop center eight wheel drive because I think it gave them a lot better chance of getting over that center bar. It was very clean and I like how it did end up shooting out of the same place that an intake. I think it makes it easy to drive around and keep everything straight in the driver's mind. Any other comments before we move on? Yeah. I, I, oh, go ahead, Gabe. Um, I would just like to say that um, Ethan said this a little bit before, but that it's a short robot design. And this was pretty much the only robot um, design that we saw that maintained a low center of gravity and was able to shoot really far. And it was just a unique thing that no other robot had. A lot of people in chat are bringing up the, uh, the 2013 uh, FRC game. I kind of agree with you guys there. These are starting to look a little bit like the 2013 uh, manipulators that were going on in FRC land. So that's pretty cool to see. All right, moving on to our eighth place team. It's team number five, FTC team 3208, Hyperlinks. Hey, so this robot was designed by Lawton. And this robot, I really liked overall just the attention to all of the details. Like you'll notice, he even ran those wires custom. And I know that personally, I've never catted the wires just because that's such a difficult thing to do. So lots of credit to him for doing that. It's really neat how they're going all the way from the connector on the motor all the way back to the rev hub tucked in there. Another thing on this one is also the detail, like including all the screws and like the chain links actually all assembled on the front intake. It's really great how it could pull those Frisbees in there with those wheels. And then you can see in the other renders of how it's able to shoot all the way across the field and the really nice renders again with showing the actual frisbees in midair at the angle they could shoot as well as pressing the beacon even the details of catting the flag out themselves so that's all really impressive all around i really liked the aesthetic and buddy climbs were always were more rare than i expected them to be so it's always nice to see some cool additions i think these were some pretty interest intricately designed parts which is always really great to see it looks very clean. And even though the parts were really intricate, like at first we were confused whenever looking through this robot, but in their press release, they specifically stated how they'd manufacture every single part. They said they'd use like a five axis mill and it would be cut out of polycarbonate. So even though it may have looked complex, they laid it out so it was really easy for us to see. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Looking good. 
Moving on to the seventh ranked team, we have team number three. Uh, also a combination of three different teams. We had FTC team 6710, uh, FTC team 9048, and FTC team 11115. Yeah, so this robot was created by Neo, Kevin, and Steven. And this robot had a lot of really interesting qualities that no other robot had. So by the biggest takeaway from this robot was their differential turret and shooter. So using two motors, they were able to power both their shooter and the turret at the same time, which I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure this was the only robot that did that. And it was by far the most, one of the most unique mechanisms um, at this competition. Um, one of the things that we would have hoped for more about this robot was fixing their intake mechanism because how they intaked frisbees and then passed it off into their shooter it seemed like there was an issue because the frisbee went like straight to 90 degrees and then would have to fall back down um that was our biggest complaint on this robot but everything was really clean the thing that would have probably helped the robot out helped out this robot more was if we had some sort of buddy climb because they have everything going for this robot but that extra push would have definitely helped them out yeah I also noticed that on the drivetrain that they had odometry modules, which is really, really cool. But I don't know how well that would work with being able to get over the barrier. I think you can see that in one of these renders here. Um, but I did really like the uh, different, the, the, just the aluminum, the pocketed aluminum, that box tubing, something you see a lot in FRC that they kind of took to FTC. <laughs> and just a lot of detail. A lot of the screws were catted and the hang mechanism was just really, really cool. Something we haven't really seen before. The more sensors you guys are adding onto these robots, the better. So I like to hear something like that. Yeah. All right, moving on into the sixth place position, we have team number 17 uh, from team FTC 10641 Atomic Gears. Uh, they're actually alumni from that FTC team. So this is Baylor. He soloed this robot. And man, this was one of my favorites, just straight up. And included a ton of details, a lot of the screws, the electronics, everything there. We had a turreted uh, shooter mechanism, which is always really neat to see. And it used a lot of parts that a lot of teams don't make a ton of use of, like first planetary 90-degree uh, gearboxes, and it was really nice. I love the attention to trying to keep the profile really low, even going so far as to make their linear actuator for hang pivoted and making their beacon compressor able to fold back down, it looks like. Um, Webcam-based turret could allow for a lot of really cool vision stuff. And all in all, I really, really liked this robot. Color scheme is looking very, very nice. Yes. All right, moving on into the fifth place position, we have team number 19 from FTC team 7244 out of the box. So what I really liked about this robot is, first of all, the color scheme really stands out of how they matched up that gold and black with the silver of the aluminum really well and kept it consistent throughout. Also, I'm really liking this drivetrain with those nice pockets on the side plates and really consistent throughout the rest of the robot, even beyond the drivetrain. It's that nice pocketing. Then inside the drivetrain, you also have those gold uh, pieces that really stand out, and those were over-the-wheel chain tensioners, and that was a really unique idea there. As well as I really liked how their intake passed it up to the shooter directly. And then there is a feed wheel on the bottom that just passed those right into the flywheels then on the ramp. You hit on something that I love about some of these high-end robots is really consistent pocketing. Um, a lot of times people will pocket stuff that's best for that part. And it may not all be about aesthetics. It may have some more strength benefits. But man, super consistent, same style pocketing looks so yeah. good. Mm -hmm. All right, and the last one before we take a, uh, a slight detour after this is in fourth place. We have team number 43 from FTC team 6964, Tech. So Brian designed this beautiful robot, and I'd like to touch on what Ethan was saying earlier. It's super consistent pocketing pattern all across this robot, and everything about this robot just highlights efficiency. They've got everything compact with a low center of gravity, even their buddy hang, their intake all seemed really clean and simple, their shooter seemed nice, and their hang was a mechanism that only a couple of other teams did that was really unique. So overall, this robot was 
great in every way. Yeah, I also really like the press release that they submitted with this. It was really clean, a lot of information that really allowed you to get a really good understanding of the kind of robot they designed and kind of really got into that, into their brain, which is really, really cool. I love the graphic design on, on yeah. and the few of these like really high end tactical mm -hmm. binders were so nicely designed. I love the detail of catting stickers on the Red Hub. It feels so extra, but it's beautiful. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out regarding these like tech binders is make sure teams that are watching, you guys do this for competition season. This really, really helps when you're in the pit, when you're trying to talk to judges and stuff. I know that's something that we were working pretty uh, strong on our FRC team last year, but that's going to go a long way for FTC as well. Uh, just so that you have like individual modules that you can pull out on a binder and show somebody like this is the module. Because most of the time you're not going to be able to see these modules uh, separated out because the um, you know, it's on your actual robot. So having just an illustration of that individual module on paper, like a lot of these teams are doing in these technical binders goes a really long way. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now, or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.